Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on misleading graphs and statistics. Our objective is to recognize when statistics and graphs are misleading. And so if we zoom in into the what you'll learn, we'll scan the lesson and list two scenarios that might involve misleading graphs or statistics. The first type are graphs that use different intervals on their scales to misrepresent trends. The second are statistics that use a measure of center that is not representative of the whole. So as we look at a real world link, the Stanley Cup is awarded annually to the champion team in the National Hockey League. The graph shows the total number of points scored in the Stanley Cup playoff games by three players during their careers. And we have Wayne Gretzky, Marc Messier, and some guy named Curry that I don't know whose first name is. According to the size of the players, how many times more points does Messier appear to have than Curry? Well, Messier looks like he's twice as high. You know, Curry's going up one line, Messier's going up two lines. So let's say about two times as many since Messier's image is twice the size of Curry. And any hockey fans, if I'm mispronouncing that, my apologies. Do you think this is representative of the player's total number of points? Well, Messier, it looks like we're checking in about 280. Curry's checking in at 230. And so if we look at the total difference here, the total difference is only 50. So basically our answer here is no. The graph is misleading. Messier has only 50 more points than Curry. So if we move on, what reason could someone have for intentionally creating a misleading Stanley Cup graph? Well, someone might want Gretzky's point total to look greater than it actually is. I mean, there is that show on television now called Numbers Never Lie, but you can certainly make it look like they're lying. As we go back up to our graph, it looks like Gretzky's almost four times as big as Curry, but that's not the case. Numbers lie. Graphs lie.
and it's our job to figure out how and why. Identify a misleading graph. Graphs let readers analyze data easily, but are sometimes made to influence conclusions by misrepresenting the data. So in our first real-world example here, explain how the graphs differ. We have graph A of spring dance tickets with the price, and graph B with the spring dance tickets and the price. Our price scale here goes from 0 to 16. Our price scale here goes from 0 to 10. The graphs show the same data. You know, 2006 was 4, 2006 was 4. Graph A, though, uses the interval of 4, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16. Graph B uses an interval of 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Which graph appears to show a sharper increase in price? Well, that would be graph B. If you look, it looks like it's going way up as opposed to graph A that's a little bit more steady. Which graph might the student council use to show that while ticket prices have risen, the increase is not significant? Well, if you're trying to convince people by just looking at a graph that the price increase is not significant, we would use A. The bars don't appear to be as high as they are here. The scale used on the vertical axis, which is our up and down, of the graph makes the increase appear less significant. So if you want your increases to appear less significant, make your intervals larger. If you want to make your increases look significant, you want to use smaller intervals. So as we move on to our got it questions, the line graphs show monthly profits for, of a company from October to March. Which graph suggests that the business is extremely profitable? And is this a valid conclusion? Explain. Well, our first graph looks like we have a huge spike in profits, while our second graph looks like, yeah, they're increasing, but they're just kind of piddly pooling around. So what we can say for this answer is, Although both graphs show a profit, we'll call this graph A and this graph B. Graph A has exaggerated profits due to the intervals changing from 500 to 100. You notice in the second graph, we're going up 500, 500, 500, 500, 500, 500. In the first graph, we're going up 500, 500, but then 100, 100, 100, 100. There was a change in interval. So that makes the first stretch was the same. The second stretch was the same. The third stretch was the same, but then our intervals changed, and so we then jumped way up when we started counting by 100s as opposed to being a consistent interval of 500. So graph A is misleading. Always need to pay attention to the intervals to see if those are consistent and fair. On our last page now, misleading statistics. Statistics can also be used to influence conclusions. So in our second guided example, an amusement park boasts that the average height of their roller coasters is 170 feet. Explain how this might be misleading. To do this, we need to calculate the measures of center. We need to calculate the mean, median, 
and the mode. So, as we did this, the mean, add all the numbers up and divide by how many numbers you got, is 170. The median was 126. The mode, well, there is no mode. As it states, the average used by the park was the mean, 170, 170. This measure is much greater than most of the heights listed because of the coaster that is 365 feet. Notice every other roller coaster is in the 100 foot height range. We just have the tornado that's absolutely gigantic. So it is misleading to use this measure to attract visitors. I mean, if you go to a park that says the average is 170 feet and every single roller coaster is below 170 feet except for one, that's very misleading. The more appropriate measure to describe the data is the mean, which is 126 feet, which is closer to the height of most coasters. So again, notice, did they lie when they said their average height was 170 feet? No. It is, that's the mean. However, it is misleading because of this one value. Let's try this on our own and the got it. Find the mean, median, and mode of the sofa prices shown in the table. Which measurement might be misleading in describing the average cost of a sofa and explain? Let's calculate our mean. So if we take 1,700 plus 1,400 plus 350 plus 1,600 plus 1,400 and then divide it by how many sofas there are, there are five. The sum is 6,450 divided by 5 gets me a mean of $1,290. What about the median? Well, we need to list these out from least to greatest, and so we would have 350, then 1,400, 1,400 again, 1,600, and 1,700. And the middle number here is the 1,400, so that's the median. And then lastly, the mode is the number that occurs the most often, and that's the 1,400 again. So our mean, if we summarize our data, is 1,290. Our median, our middle price, is 1,400, and our mode, that is also 1,400. And we're being asked which measurement might be misleading in describing the average cost of the sofa. Well, most of these sofas are above $1,400. All of them are either 1,400 or above, except for the do-it-yourself assembly, which is only 350. Well, that very low price threw off the mean. It gave us a mean that is unnaturally low. In fact, this mean is smaller than all but one of the values. The other four values are all larger than the mean. And so we can say for our answer then that the mean would be misleading because the value of the mean is smaller than four of the five sofas. I mean, if I'm that sofa store and I'm trying to get people in the store, I'm going to say, yay, come in. Our average price is only 1290 Might get more people in than actually being a little bit more honest where our average price is actually 1400 
And that's it for this lesson on misleading graphs and statistics. Good luck.